Hey, David Kahn here with another question from your Hayson Harris Math SL textbook. This is chapter 1H, question A, 8 parts A and B. In this question, we have a, a function. It's not allowed to be 3, because when x is 3, you have a 0 in your denominator. That's division by 0. And we're asked to show that it's a self-inverse function. To be a self-inverse function, that means that it is its own inverse. If you take the inverse of it, you get it back. We're asked to show this by A looking at a graph and B using algebra. So the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to graph it. And I've already gone ahead and done that. This is the graph of f of x equal to 3x take 8 over x take 3. And what we can see is that it's symmetrical as it needs to be to be a self-inverse function. And it's symmetrical around the line y equals x. So let's throw the line y equals x in there. The line y equals x goes through the origin, and it rises at the same rate that it runs. So it looks like that. We can see that this function is symmetrical about that line. If you folded the paper over along the line y equals x, you would see that this line would overlap that line, and this line would overlap that line. So that's our evidence that this is a self-inverse function by graphing. For part b, we'll find the same result by algebra by finding the inverse of the function. So our function f of x equal to 3x take 8 over x take 3, we'll need to find the inverse of the function. And the way that you go about finding the inverse of any function, whether it's a self-inverse or not, is to swap your variables. x becomes f of x, and, uh, sorry, f of x becomes x, and x becomes the inverse of f of x. So f of x becomes x, and we get x equals 3 times the inverse of f of x, take 8, all over the inverse of f of x, take 3. All right, now all that remains is to solve this equation for the inverse of f of x. Uh, and that might be a little easier said than done, because we have two of them. So what we're going to have to do is, at some point, combine them together into one. And it's not going to be clear how to do that from the start. So. Uh, what we should maybe do is, is start by just rearranging and seeing what happens. First off, I don't like this fraction. Uh, combining them through the fraction is going to be really tough. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole term and multiply it over to the other side. That's going to give me x times the inverse of f of x, take 3, is equal to 3 times the inverse of f of x, take 8. All right, let's try uh, simplifying further. Let's distribute into the brackets. This is going to give us x times the inverse of f of x, take 3. And that's equal to 3 times the inverse of f of x, take 8. Now, it's probably worth pausing for a minute here to discuss some of the function notation here. A, t and a term like this looks really weird if you don't know what you're reading. This is x times the inverse of f of x. This whole thing here is one unit, and it's indivisible. It's not the inverse of f times x. It's not 1 over f of x. It's not 1 over f times x. This is one unit. You can't break it apart. So when we multiply it by x, it doesn't become f of the inverse of f of x squared. You can't combine the x's directly, because this is indivisible. This doesn't represent a multiplication in the middle. It's the inverse of f of x. And the same thing over here. We represent a multiplication here, 3 times the inverse of f of x. But this unit is indivisible. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is treat this as one block. Call it a, 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 a b, or a q, or some other variable. But we can't break it up. But anyway, what we can do is some other algebraic operations, like combining like terms. We have x inverses of f of x, and 3 inverses of f of x. So let's get them both on the same side of the equation. x inverse of f of x 
take 3 inverse of f of x. I'll move this 3 to the other side. So that gives me, um, oh, I've lost uh, an x in there. Sorry. Distribute the x in, and it's negative 3x. So I'll move the negative 3x to the other side, and we'll get positive 3x take 8. Now, like I was saying, this is one unit. Call it a b, call it a q, call it whatever you want. But whatever it is, we have x of them here, and we have 3 of them here. And we're going to take 3 of them from x of them. So another way to write that is x take 3 lots of the inverse of f of x. What I've done is I've factorized out an inverse of f of x from this expression. And that's equal to 3x take what that did, though, was it combined the two expressions. It combined the two variables into one. And so now to solve this for the inverse of f of x, all I have to do is divide by x take 3. And what do you know? We get an expression 3x take 8 over x take 3, which you may recall is f of x. That's this thing here. 3x take 8 over x take 3. That's what we started with. So what that means is that the inverse of the function is the function. It's a self-inverse function. 